So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. The topic for this evening is inner knowing. And today is February the 3rd, 2022. This theme of inner knowing is something that I want to expand on for not just for tonight, but actually for the rest of February. Um, why? Because why this topic in February? Because February is in like in my mind is a it's kind of like a turning point. Um, not just personally, but everyone is going to on some level is going to feel this turning point because the energy is just getting to be so intense now. Um, I was actually just before I started recording, talking to people in the um, in the audience, is that from a lot of sources, we all know that many things are happening. For example, Jason Nestis mentioned that um, we are now at fifty eight hundred data points, which means that like like roughly for each hour that we um, we live life um, any hour, we actually is either consciously or un most likely unconsciously processing 5,800 times that um, information, which means for each hour, we actually living through 5,800 hours worth of information. So that's the amount of information that is hitting us every, every, every hour. It's, it's a lot. It's like almost 6,000 times what we are normally used to. Well, normally as in maybe about five years ago, um, <clears throat> the, we are at a much lower um, data point when that's so it's much more manageable we can actually process a lot of the information if we pay attention we can actually process them consciously whereas at the rate we are at now like almost six thousand times um like for each minute it's 56 almost six thousand minutes worth of information that our body is um, processing <clears throat> so we can no longer consciously no matter how no matter how much you pay attention no matter how much how conscious you are it's, it's getting to the point where it's not even possible for us to consciously process this information and the good thing is that we our body is actually built to be able to process information unconsciously. So a lot of the things that is being the, all the information that is hitting us, whether they are hitting us um, as in things that we read on, on the newspaper or um, talking to people or social media or books, so those those information, but also energetically as well, because energetically, we are doing a lot of catching up. Our planet, um, planet Earth, had been kind of um, isolated from the rest of our sector of the the universe because um, planet Earth and humanity wanted to have an experience a very unique experience and in order to to make sure that the experience that we have here is not going to impact the rest of the the, the galaxy too much adversely so we are kind of we've been under quarantine for a long time and it is just in the last couple of years that that quarantine has been lifted and it is when the quarantine started to be lifted that the data points starting to increase. 
because we are the planet earth is like everybody it's not just one nation or two nations but everyone not just human beings but all beings as long as we are on planet earth we are all getting that catching up download of information and we are all just playing catch up now because the rest of the the um, the universe had had progressed so much further ahead so it's and um it's been naturally upgrading itself all throughout the time that that planet earth decided to um you know have this unique experience so that's why there's so much information hitting us and part of the reason why this information um like right now we are at about 5800 but i'm quite sure that we would hit even more we we probably would get to at least 10000 um if not more so it's it's like it's only going to increase so why why is it all of a sudden increasing so much because we need to make a change in the way that we play um within this reality and in order to assist us to make this change all of this is actually get trying to saturate us so that we have to give up that because as long as we're holding um, our own thought patterns consciously trying to trying to hang on to the way that we know life as it is um, then the harder it is for us to allow the new reality and the new possibilities to start to come so that's why all this information is hitting us it's it is the 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 aim is actually to brick is really to brick our brain so that we get to the point where we just surrender because it's just so much information even our body is getting to the point where we can't really handle because it, our body um, it's catching up. It is, it is, it is actually doing a lot of upgrading. And um, but even with this upgrading, it is stretching the limits of our body. So that's why I want to talk about a few things to really assist everybody so that they can get through this period without um, too much, I would say without too much um, <clears throat> unpleasant um, surprises. So this is what inner knowing that's why i picked the topic of inner knowing because our we actually have all of this information all the energies that's hitting us now is actually simply trying to remind us it's nothing new it is just that we have um for the last well that a few thousand years for the last few thousand years we chose to forget all of those in the knowing we chose to forget and um, in order for us to have um, experience of being disconnected with who we truly are as a, a source creator and we but even though we we forgot, but we never can be completely, how, what's the word I'm looking for? We, we can never be cut off. We can never get to the point where we, um, oops, hang on. Um, <laughs> 
Let's see. Can you guys hear me? Because I'm actually getting. Um, okay, so now that um, everybody can hear me again, is that um, it's very low. Very low. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me. On my side, you sound well. <laughs> I am actually at the, the the maximum already, so I cannot. It sounds okay. It sounds good for me too. Yeah. So I. I yeah. I think. Um... For me too, you sound good. Okay. Great. Thank you. So the inner knowing is that we actually know all of these information and all of these information is the all of these data points is simply coming in to remind us so it is not about new information we already know it it's all within us it is just that we are reconnecting with that inner knowing and there are so many ways that we can facilitate that process. And so I wanted to actually talk about how we can facilitate that process. So that, that actually brings us to the first thing I want to talk about for on the topic of inner knowing is our body, what our body actually is. Our body is... Um, we think of it as matter, as, as things that we can, like we can touch our body and we can sense with our body. And our body is actually um, all of our inner knowing, all of our thought processes, all of the programs that we have take on, taken on from past life, from our parents lineage and all of that it's all of that and when and and all of the thoughts all of the the thinking that's how our body is manifested from so when you really look at your body really know your body you actually know everything that you needed to know about yourself, about how to navigate this reality. So this is actually what our body is. Our body is, is not a body. Um, I think it is Richard Bartlett who, who talked about that we don't have a body. We have a body of evidence. So our body is actually a is material, uh, is... is is all of our thought patterns, all the things that we carry on within us, whether it is from our soul or whether it is actually experiences that we have in during this lifetime, all the, the patterns that we have inherited, all of those things, that actually is being expressed materially as our body so that's actually what our body truly is so that's why one of the the most important thing that you can do in order to assist yourself in remembering all of this is to connect with your body really connect with your body and what do I mean by connecting with your body? I mean, yeah, we, we all, we have this body and we do our best to, to take care of it. However, because of all the programmings and all the, the experiences we had, we have certain beliefs about our body. Some people may think that, oh, I'm, I, my my legs are too short or too long, my face is too round or you know not round enough. Hair is 
too thin or too thick, too, too this or that. So we have so many hang-ups about our looks and we don't realize that what we look is actually a reflection of all the thought processes. So what you're looking at is actually all of that. You're not looking at your body. You're actually looking at all the thinking that you have about life itself. So it's actually... Um, even the, the the each joints of our finger, how the the length of our so we have like three joints for for all of our fingers. Um, well, all of them besides the 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 thumb. Thumb is is kind of like there's only well actually even the thumb is is three parts. <clears throat> so, but how the um, the relationship between or the ratio between each of our fingers the each joint of a finger how our palm um the ratio of our palm as compared to the rest of our arm all of that is actually evidence of what we have inherited what we have taken on in terms of programs from our lineage, from past life, what we believe about ourselves, all of that, you can actually see it in your fingers. And that's why there are people who um, knows, like if they can just read your palms and be able to tell you things that happened to you in the past and also be able to tell you um, the future as well because all of that your plans about how your life is going to go it's already encoded within your body it is just that most people don't pay that kind of attention to our body so when i say reconnect with with your body if you really want to make this transition because we are all going through this transition together um no one is is left out the people that are here the people that you experience the the people that you know now those are the people that is going through this transition how they are going to get through it that is for each person to um determine for themselves and if you really want to make this transition as easy as possible for yourself first thing is connect with your body because your body does so many things it it <clears throat> It has a, a blueprint of how to process energy. It has the blueprint of how to remember. It's all within there. Um, our, our DNA is being activated by all of these information from the universe that's hitting us. However, we don't even know that or we're not very aware or, or good at talking to our body. We're not even good at listening to our body. Most of the time, we, um, it's like we, we treat our body as like a, somebody that is dumb. And, that, and yes, in a way, our body cannot speak in languages to us, but it absolutely communicate with us through the way it looks, through um, sensation, through whether it is hot or cold, whether it is sweaty or not, whether it recuperates easy 
or not. All of these are the ways that our body communicates with us. However, a lot of the times, because we are so focused outside of ourselves, we're focusing on talking to other people, watching um, videos, watching Netflix. M most people, and myself included, is, you know, when I sit down to eat a meal, I would put on something to entertain myself while I'm eating, whereas if I'm more conscious, then I, if I actually want to um, consciously live my life, it's actually to when I eat, especially when I eat, because when I eat, I'm actually taking care of my body, fueling my body, putting energy back into my body. So when I actually consciously listen to how my body reacts to the food that I eat, to when I am hungry, because sometimes when I have things to do, I would forget to eat until I actually start to, you know, like really feel discomfort, I'm uncomfortable. And then I re re realize that, oh, I'm hungry. That's why my body is giving me all these. But before my body got to the point of feeling this discomfort, my body actually already has different signs that um, it's, it's like the first time when my body's starting to feel a little bit, you know, low on energy, it will it already knows to give me a sign. Sign could be something like, <clears throat> um, I will start to feel distracted because I don't have as much energy to be able to focus my attention. So some sort of distraction. Um, it could be I start to get um, a little headache. Like all of these things, it, if all of these can be different ways that your body communicate with you. It's like, hey, um, I know you're you you're busy with your life, you know all of that, but I need uh, I need food. You, you need to put something in me so that I can support you to go about the rest of your day. It's so something as simple as that that we don't always listen to our body. And that actually goes for a lot of other things as well. So consciously communicating and listening to the little cues that your body is giving you is really part of connecting to your body as well. And this is something that we, I highly suggest that all of you, um, myself included, is to start to pay more attention to that. I think since my, um, I, since I was ill for a couple of weeks, I actually got to be really good at paying attention to my body because there were times when my energy is much lower and so I don't really have a lot of buffer between when I needed to feed myself to when I actually feel uncomfortable because my energy dropped below what it is, um, what my body needed in order to feel more normal. So that really taught me how to pay attention to my body, to really observe every little thing, and actually slowed me down and taught me a lot about my relationship with my, <clears throat> with my body. So, and the thing is, it does not, it shouldn't have to take an illness in order to to, to, to teach me to pay attention to my body. I should have this 
much better relationship with my body, especially now, because there's so much that is going on with our body. Our body is processing so much information that um, our body actually really needed our conscious cooperation. And so if you really want to assist yourself, if you really want to get to the point where you can get information from your body, because all of the information is already in your body, you simply have to pay attention to how your body reacts to your environment to know whether your environment is supporting your body or not. You simply have to pay attention to how your body reacts when you are talking to someone to understand that your body already knows whether that person is good for you or not because your body actually has so much can process so much information other than um, what that person is talking and speaking about. You, you actually, your body feels energy, feels intentions from that person. And you actually um, can tell whether somebody is giving you the facts as it is, as it is or they are trying to talk and convince you um, from a certain agenda. All of this, your body knows already because your body has so much wisdom in it. It is just that most of the time we override our body. Instead of listening to our body, we actually um, listening to, oh, this person looks so beautiful. So this person must be telling the truth because they look so good. Or they talk in a certain tone of voice that they use certain keywords that um, convince you that this person, you can trust this person. Whereas it's not just the words that somebody use or how they talk, it's actually the intention, the energy behind it. And that is something that your conscious mind may not be trained to pick up, but your unconscious mind, your body actually is very good at deciphering all that. If only we listen to our body. And the other, and, and it's not just person, it can be a situation. It can be a room, it can be a building that we actually, our body knows so much more about the energetics of a, a building because it, that's what it's designed to do, to pick up on all of this information. It process so much information and we don't even, um, bother to ask our body, to listen to our body, to really get all of these information that can be very important in how we interact with our environment, how we interact with one another, all of that. So the first thing about that I really want to stress is to connect with your body in a much more conscious way. Really take your time to listen to your body as though you're observing someone you love. It's like the first, it's um, when you love somebody, you observe everything about them you try to find out what they like and what they don't like. So you observe them. So this is really how we should be paying attention to our body because our body is our ally. 
it, our body is really part of the reality of how we interact with this reality. And because we pay so little attention to the little nuances that we feel in our body, that that actually it, um, if we had paid more attention, we could have avoided a lot of unpleasant experiences if only we listen to our body. So let's just start to consciously connect with our body, to consciously observe our body, to consciously listen to our body. When we have done all of that and we have created this rapport, this connection and alignment with our body, then we can start to do the second step, which is starting to ask our body what it is that we actually want to know because chances are whatever we wanted to know our body already knows the answer or at the very least our body knows where we can look who we can talk to in order to get the answers that we needed and before we ask those questions, though, we need to first establish that connection with our body so that when we ask, we know how to decipher the answer because our body doesn't always communicate with us in words. Not always. Sometimes it can. Sometimes we can actually hear the messages that our body wants to give us. But a lot of the times, especially when we begin, we don't have access to that inner knowing from our body in word form, but we can always access it in other ways. It could be a feeling in our body. It could be an opening in our body. It could be an ease when, when we ask a question is, can I trust this person? For example, if you, after you've asked this question, you feel your body tightening up and you feel um, yourself contracting, then that is a, that's a communication from your body. Whereas if you ask the same question and you all of a sudden feel this ease and ability to um, connect with that person, feeling the openness with that person, then you actually, it's also how your body communicates with you. But if you don't already have that connection with your body, you, if you don't already have that ease of communication with your body, then these, you won't be able to hear the answer when you are asking information. So that is the, the joy and the, the reward of getting to know our body because all of that information is already stored within us. We just need to know how to access it and also know that sometimes the very act of asking, we may not get the answer right away, but we will get the answer when um, it is the right timing for us to get that answer. And that's something that our conscious mind may not be able to, may not understand. Because from our ego's point of view, it's like, hey, I asked you a question, you know, why didn't you answer me? But the thing is, the answer is something that may not be able to happen right away. 
you may need to, or your body may need to pull together other information before it can actually give you the answer. So that's all of that is about communicating with your body and making your body your ally because for better or worse, your you and your body is a unit. Whether you like your body um, or not, whether you, whatever it is that you believe your body or not, your body is your ally. You are a unit. So if you have issues with your body, then now is the time to resolve those issues and really know that your body may not be functioning or looking or feeling the way that you want it to. But the way your body feels is a message. It's a communication with you. So don't blame the messenger. It is up to you to listen to your body and work with your body so that your body is aligned with you. So that when you think of something, you, your mind, your spirit, your, so we are body, mind, spirit complex. We have all of this in one package. And the body is one third and a very important third of how you interact with this reality. When you align yourself with your body, when you connect with your body on a much deeper level, um, much more consciously, then you, it simply makes your life so much easier. So consciously paying attention to your body is a big part of connecting with your body. The other ways to work with your body is really conscious movement because your body is always moving. Your body is... Like even when you breathe, you don't just, um, so actually your whole body breathes with you. It's not just one part of your body breathes. Actually, naturally, the whole body breathes. So that is movement. So even if you are not exercising, as long as you're breathing, your body is always moving. So movement is important to your body. And when you consciously move, there are things that you can do to consciously move your body. For example, um, Chinese people have used just qigong, which is, or they use tai chi, which is how to consciously move energy with your body parts. So that is really conscious movement. When you consciously move your body, you consciously move energy through your body. You can start to unlock any stuck energy in your body. You can do that also with yoga. Or even very simply, when you walk, when you walk consciously, meaning that you don't just walk, you actually pay attention to each part of your body as you walk. And not just each part of your body, you also pay attention to how your body reacts to environment. 
because the ground you walk on, how does your body respond to this walking on the ground? Each location has its own energy. How does your body react to the energy of that location? So walking, just something as simple as walking, but consciously do it, consciously be aware of what's going on in your body. So that is in itself, this conscious movement will start to, if you do it consistently, it will actually start to unlock any stuckness in your body. And you don't have to, even if you um, doing walking inside your own home, you're actually walking on the spot that when you do it consciously, that itself is a great exercise to start to rebalance how our body is, to rebalance how our muscle, each of our muscles connecting to one another. So conscious movement can start to unlock stuck energy in our body. All of this are things that we can do in order to facilitate our body in being able to process and access the full potential of our own energy. And the last thing I want to cover is that um, I mentioned that we, our body is being hit with like 5,800 data points. So it's a lot of information hitting us is to consciously let go because there are the information that is coming to us is not always information that we can use right now. It could be information that was relevant five years ago, 10 years ago, or maybe a few generations ago. So all this information, we may not be able to use right in this moment. So part of assisting ourselves, assisting our body is also to let go as well. It's like when we breathe in, when we take in information, we also need to breathe out. So find time in your schedule during the day is to simply clear your mind, clear your body, any tension in your body to consciously relax the tension points, to consciously let go of the constant stream of ideas of self-talk is to simply let go. You can do it maybe for a minute each day, maybe once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and, or if you care to, is to do it once in the evening as well, just to take a few minutes to simply let go of everything, you, all the tension in your body, all the thoughts in your body. You may not be able to do it for extended period of time, but all you have to do is just take 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. It does not need to be a, a long period of time, but just a conscious effort 
you simply let go of everything. Whatever it is that you cannot seem to handle right now, or the tension in your body mm, is your body's communicating with you that, oh, I'm trying to um, process this information, but there is some blockage. So all you need to do is to simply acknowledge all of those blockage and allow your body to experience what it feels like to be relaxed. And your body would be able to learn from that and be able to start to unblock itself as well, to let go as well. So those are the three things that we can really, if we practice a lot and consciously do them, it does not take a long time, each one of these. But if we start to do those things, it will start to assist our body to be able to handle all of that information without it needing to get ill, get sick, or get tired. All of that is really your body's communication with you that you need to do something. You need to give us a hand and help us. So that's why your body is giving you all these feedback. So consciously observe your body. Listen to your body. Communicate with your body and start to know when your body is doing well and start to notice what is a yes in your body. And start to notice what is a no. What does no feels like in your body? What does good feels like in your body? What does bad feels like in your body? What does joy feel like in your body? And what does sadness feel like in your body? So notice, consciously notice what your body is communicating with you, listening to your body, and then asking information, having that two-way communication with your body is the next step. And in conscious movement, consciously assisting our body to move in such a way that your body would be able to unblock itself and be able to open to process even more information. And then consciously letting go, consciously teach your body how to relax, what relax feels like not just relaxing in your muscles, but also relaxing in your mind as well. So giving your body that training to let go. So those are the three things that I really encourage of you to start to incorporate more of in your routine in order to support your body to, to start to remember from all of these energies that is here to assist each and every one of us to remember that we are part of the universe and that even though we are a little behind, but we already have it in our body, we just need to remember again. That's all I have to share this evening.